So I thought myself a Duracell AGM and I didn't buy it just because it's it looks like a little Duracell battery and I was in no way swayed into the purchase with the free bunny. I mean the uh, the battery was only £115 delivered. Three year warranty. Duracell so it should be alright. Not convinced that that bit will actually be able to stay on when it's been used though. That's a bit pointless. Uh, we'll change this battery first and then we can move the car out of the way. It's very simple. Uh, 10 mil. Take off the earth connection first. Take off the red cover. Now, with these, you can't actually get to the connector that holds the positive terminal on unless you take off these two and then take this plate off and then get to it, which is just a bit of a pain. Now I've got a little CTEC charger port plugged into mine. It's always handy to uh, have it charged up if you leave it sitting around for too long. Okay, now with that moved out of the way, you can then get in behind it and then remove that part. I'm wondering if it's worth spinning that around to have on that side. Okay, now on the uh, electric drive model, we've actually got a separate clamp that you don't get on the other versions. It goes over there and over there, and then there's a, a rod that goes in over there somewhere. And if you've got a left-hand drive car, the battery will be over this side. Right, that's the, the bar. It hooks in through a little plate at the back there and goes up underneath and bolts in. Just makes it so much easier to get both out of the way. And then you're not working around things. There you go, that's the, the bracket. Now, I'll just grab you again. Now that this little bracket here, I'm going to guess it's a 13mm, we'll certainly find out soon. Yeah, that has to come out because that clamps down on the bottom of the, the uh, battery. I can't, there's certain types of battery hold downs. Now you've got this little lip thing, and you've got certain names, I think it's like B13 or something like that. But So yeah, you do need to have the correct uh, hold down for the battery. Uh, just going to use a bunch of extensions, pretty sure it's a 13 Yeah, 13 mil. Now, somebody recently said to me, I don't sound particularly dynamic. Well, that's because I'm English. Only the Americans can be jumping around and shouting dude all the time and high-fiving and that sort of shit. Saying, what's going on, guys? Yeah, and then... It's as simple as that. I'll battery out. Now it's worth checking because they do fill up with water as this one has. Now there's actually no drains there. The drain sits here, which is obviously no good because it only actually drains from this, that little section there. It's only water that gets in there, sits in there. I mean, these bolts don't exactly rust up that much, but it might be worth drilling some holes in there just to let them let them drain. I did that on one of our previous cars and it worked out okay. Yeah, let's get a little drill out and have a look. There you go. Drilled the holes. They've drained out. Best thing to do is just give it a little uh, wipe out. Make sure they're dry inside, clear out any dead leaves and stuff. So obviously those little holes are going to be quite easy to block up. Now if you put something in there, say a small piece of foam or something, that'll obviously stop things from actually getting into the holes and uh, that'll act like a little water filter. I wonder if I've got any foam anywhere. Well, what I should actually say is, I wonder if I can find my foam. So this is why I need to tidy up because I can never fucking find anything. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> 
absolute shit hell. Yeah, found a bit of a foam from an old filter. I'm just going to cut some little foam plugs, I think, and go in there. There you go. Create some little foamy things. Uh, stop them getting stuck up with all you know, bits of leaves and debris and that sort of stuff. And it allow the uh, water just to seep out the bottom. Just give the uh, battery tray a little wipe down, make sure it's all clean. You know, it's all plastic, it's not gonna, the tray's not gonna rust. It's not like the, the road stuff. Okay, now use your bad arm to put the battery back in. Move all the unnecessary stuff out of the way. Get this clamp back in. I mean, that, that is really enough to, to hold the battery down, but since we've got this other thing, we might as well add it back in. And it's also worth noting that these aren't particularly good. Let's see if we can just swap this around. Yeah, seems like a better idea. But then you do need, if you put it around that way, a ratchet spanner. Right, it's tight. I'm just going to reinstall my trickle charger lead. And I think it's, it's this extra plate that's going to stop us putting on the the funny coloured Duracell top. And I suppose there's nothing stopping us cutting that top down slightly. Now the most important thing to do, or not to do, Needs to accidentally touch both the terminals with this bit of metal. Otherwise, you get a large, large flash, a crackle, and then you fill your pants. Some people might like that, but it's less than ideal. I'm just not used to dealing with tiny nuts. Magnet. On a stick. Now yours won't have all this. This is just the GPS thing that I put in. There you go, and that's the reason. Well, that bit won't fit on there, and it's not even worth cutting it down because you'd be left with like a small slither. So that can get recycled. Get out of the way, cut that zip tie off, and put the tools away. It's not going to catch anything down there. The radiator shrouded, the fan shrouded. Hook it onto that. It's all right. Removal foliage. That's tight. That's tight. Thank you. 